All right, guys, today we're going to do a quadratic in nature. So what this means is that you'll find that some uh, functions can be factored or using the quadratic formula. So same thing is when we get x squared plus 5x plus 6, something like that, right? We can factor that. Well, there's some actual equations that act just like that, but they look kind of different. So we're actually going to try to recognize those right now and use one of my favorite tools, which is use substitution. So just to remember a reminder of the quadratic equation, we can do factoring, right? Which is when we factor, we get our two binomials that equal to zero. And then to solve this, we set each of those binomials equal to zero. And then we solve for x, right? So our final answer looks like x equals x equals. Okay, where the quadratic formula, we can automatically, once we find our a, b, and our c there, we could say that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, but today we're actually going to stick with stuff that's factorable um, and look at how that pattern goes. All right, so if we look at example one, you might recognize that it kind of looks like a quadratic. I mean, look, we have an x squared minus a 3x, right? minus 40, that would be nice. So if you look, the one thing that looks out of place is the 2x plus 5. And that's exactly what your hint should be for what is your u. So u substitution is a process that makes our, our equation, whatever we're given in the future, uh, look pretty to be able to solve. So what I'm going to do right now is say u equals 2x plus 5. And I'm going to substitute that in our original right now. So if I did, I would get u squared minus 3u minus 40 equals 0. Okay. Um, in this case, yes, we could use the quadratic formula, but it wouldn't be u and it wouldn't be x anymore. It would be u. But I'd rather you factor. Now, if you forgot your factoring stuff, um, you might want to pause this right now and look at a couple uh, reminders on how to factor. That would be either using your box method, your x factor method, whatever you need. Okay, so I'm going to go through the factoring part of this lesson a little quickly because, again, we've been factoring for almost two years now. So when I change this to my two binomials, I get u minus 8 times u plus 5 equals 0. Now be careful, we have a tendency, and hopefully I don't make this mistake as I go through, we have a tendency of using x's because we're so used to it. But right now we're in use. So now I'm going to separate this and say u minus 8 equals 0 and u plus 5 equals 0. Now I'm going to actually, this is the point where I substitute back in my u because we know our answer, we don't want it in u's, we want it in x's. So I'm going to substitute that u back in. So I get 2x plus 5 minus 8 equals 0. So if I continue solving this, I get 2x minus 3 equals 0 and 2x equals 3. So x equals 3 halves. Okay. And I'll do the same for the next one. I'll get 2x plus 5 plus 5 equals 0. 2x plus 10 equals 0. 
2x equals negative 10. So x equals negative 5. Now, for years and years, your teachers have been also saying to you, when you are solving, you can plug back in to make sure your answer is 100% correct. The thing is, guys, we have to plug it in because sometimes our answer is not possible. We learned this when we were solving for some of the log stuff, right? When we were solving and we got x is a certain value, but if we plugged it back in, it made that negative. It didn't exist. So we have to plug back in. So I'm going to do this with you. Now I have a newer calculator, but the older calculator should be okay. I'm going to show you the difference in a second. So when I plug this in, I'm going to go parentheses 2. Now instead of x, remember I'm putting the 3 halves in plus 5 parentheses squared minus 3 parentheses um, actually yep 2 parentheses 3 halves plus 5 and then our last part is minus 40. Now if you see, we want it to equal 0, so I press enter, and it equals 0. So that's great, okay? Now, sorry there's glare right now, um, the sun's coming up. So now I have to plug in the other one. Now you can plug the other one in by just doing this all over again, or the other trick, which you can use on an older calculator, is you can move it up to that, um, to that function right there. So I just moved it up. You might not be able to see it with the light. And as you can see, I just repeated it itself. But instead, now I'm going to go back and change this three halves to negative. Make sure you use negative, not a subtraction sign. And I'm going to delete that too. And I have to do that in both places. Negative five, delete that too. If I press enter, what do you know? I get zero again. So both of these answers work. So I tend to put check marks to say they work, that I check them, and that's all good. All right, let's go to example two here. Make sure there's no problem. There we go. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to move that six over. So I get one over two x minus one squared plus 5 over 2x minus 1 equal, or plus 6 equals 0. Now, one of the most difficult things is to correctly identify the u. And remember, our purpose of the u is to make it look pretty. So, when I ask you, what do you want to make your u? Most of the time, students want to make their u the 2x plus, minus 1. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Now if I plug the 2x minus 1 as our u into our equation, I end up getting 1 over u squared plus 5 over u plus 6. Wait a second. The U is supposed to make this look pretty. And this doesn't look pretty at all. Okay. So actually, this is incorrect. Again, the U substitution is to make it be easier. And that's not easier. So there's something wrong with my U. And when in actuality here, your U well, as you can see, the 2x minus 1 was an awesome thought, but where was the 2x minus 1? The 2x minus 1 was actually in the denominator, so that is where we're going to put our u. We're going to go u equals 1 over 2x minus 1. Okay, that means... Think of this. What is 1 squared? 1 squared is still 1. So this value right here is u squared 
plus, well, if I took out a 1 over 2x minus 5, I would be left with a 5. And then that 1 over 2x minus 1 is u. Plus 6 equals 0. Now this looks pretty. Now we can do something with that. We factor this out, we get u plus 3 times u plus 2 equals 0. Now I'm going to split this up. I'm actually going to split this up um, kind of across the page here because um, I need a lot of work to do. So I have u plus 3 equals 0. And I have u plus 2 equals 0. All right, let me plug back in 1 over 2x minus 1 plus 3. Now I'm going to solve this. I'm going to move the 3 over first. Now we have that fraction there. How do we get rid of that fraction? Well, we multiply by that derivative, the <laughs> denominator. Sorry, my calculus is coming in. So actually, we are left with 1 equals negative 3 times 2x minus 1. When I multiply that to both sides. Now I distribute that out. So I get 1 minus or 1 equals negative 6x plus 3. Keep in mind that a negative times a negative is a positive. I'm going to draw an arrow so you guys see my work in order. All right, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, leaving negative 2 equals negative 6x, and then divide. So 1 third equals x. All right, let's do the same thing on this page, or this uh, binomial. So I get 1 over 2x minus 1 plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2. 1 over 2x minus 1 equals the negative 2. Multiply by that denominator. I get 1 equals negative 2 times 2x minus 1. So we get 1 equals negative 4x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, we get negative 1 equals negative 4x. So x is 1 fourth. Okay, we need to check our answers. I know this looks like a lot. You're tempted not to check your answers, but we have to just in case. So I'm going to clear out what I have. I'm going to see if I can get rid of this glare. It's probably not going to work. But at least I can see here. That way you can see what I'm typing in. So i got to be careful with my parentheses in this one, guys. So I have parentheses 1 divided by. And then I'm going to do my denominator, which is parentheses 2 parentheses. And our x in this case in the first one is going to be 1 third. And then I have minus 1 parentheses squared parentheses. Okay, and let me show you. Let's see if I can. Yeah, it's still. Oh, there we go. Maybe I should leave it this way. Okay, look at those parentheses. Now I have to add. And then I'm going to have parentheses 5 because this is this new fraction. 5 divided by. Let's do the denominator. That's. 2 parentheses 1 third minus 1. Now, instead of putting in the 6 and stuff, I know that on the equation itself, I wanted it equal to negative 6. So as long as when I press enter, this equals negative 6, that 1 third is a solution.
And what do you know? It is a solution. That is good. Now, with all those parentheses, I need to make sure I'm okay. And this works. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to go to history. And as you can see, this time you see it moving blue. I'm going to enter that. And instead, I'm going to change all the one-thirds to one-fourth. And when I press enter, I get negative six again. So these two are answers. So I'm going to put check marks right by them. Awesome. Those both work. Yes, we just did two examples that both the solutions were correct. Both the answers were solutions. That's how I should say it. But there is going to come up a time it doesn't. So make sure that you are paying attention. All right. So as you guys can see, and I want to show you in the front. So I'm going to turn this back over. Are you happen to be the middle term? Okay. Same thing. The you was the middle term. All right, so let's use that same thing. So if I use that same idea, let me move that 20 over. X plus the square root of X minus 20 equals 0. And I said that U equals the square root of X. I want to prove to you that this works. So this works. Using the middle term works if it's in order. Remember, in order is about highest uh, exponent to lowest. This exponent is 1. This exponent is 1 half. If I were to square both sides, because remember, I always start out with my u squared. If I were to square both sides, I get u squared equals, well, the square root and the squares, they cancel. So that works. So I can substitute that in. So u squared plus u minus 20 equals 0. And now I'm going to factor u plus 5 times u minus 4 equals 0. All right, let's separate those. U plus 5 equals 0. U minus 4 equals 0. Plug in our U, so we get x square, or square root of x plus 5 equals 0. Square root of x equals negative 5. How do you get rid of a square root? We square it, so x equals 25. Okay, let's do this on for u minus 4. So you get square root of x minus 4 equals 0. Square root of x equals 4. So x equals 16. All right, let's plug that in our calculator. Okay, I'm going to bring that close again so you guys can see. Clear that out. All right, so the first one I'm doing is 25. 25 plus the square root of 25. Now I don't have to put in that 20. Let's just do it at this point and make sure it equals zero. Ready? Oh my gosh, it doesn't equal zero. It equals 30. So it does not work. And this is why, guys, I want to show you that at one point you would have noticed that it didn't work. And it's right in this step. Can a square root, when you find the value of a square root, can it ever be a negative number? No, it will always be positive. So this, no matter what, will not work. So let's try the other one. Um, we have 16 plus 
the square root of 16 and that equals 20 and that is exactly what we wanted so in example three we only had one solution all right two more example guys and then we're done all right so let's check before we make that middle term automatically the u let's make sure that we're in order two-thirds is bigger than one-third so we are definitely in correct order so we can automatically make our u that middle now when i mean middle it doesn't mean that coefficient that goes with it okay i just wish my camera would focus today but apparently it does not like me so i'm sorry this is taking longer than usual okay so x to the one third which I'm going to prove to you why this makes sense. Again, if I squared u and I squared x to one third, if we remember our exponent rules, what do we do with these two numbers? We multiply and one third times two is two thirds. Okay. So we end up getting u squared plus 9u plus 18 equals 0. So I get u plus 6 times u plus 3 equals 0. Let's separate these out. So u plus 6 equals 0 and u plus 3 equals 0. u equals negative 6. Oh, I remember, I want to get in the habit of actually putting in the u first. So let me do this x to the 1 3rd plus 6 equals 0. Okay, so now let's do it. x to the 1 3rd equals negative 6. Now, how do I get rid of a one-third? Well, one-third, guys, is like a cube root. How would you get rid of a cube root? Well, to get rid of a cube root, you cube both sides. So negative 6 cubed is negative 2 16. Then I have x to the one-third plus 3 equals 0 x to the one third equals negative three and again we're going to cube both sides so I get x equals negative 27. all right when we check our answers in our calculator the older calculators be careful with that fractional exponent okay guys so we have that we're using the value of negative 216 and we're going to go over, um, we're going to go to the two-thirds. So I'm going to type this in as if I had an older calculator. When you do caret, because that's how I got up there, is that caret, then you want to do parentheses 2 divided by 3, especially in the older calculators. Then we are going to do plus 9. And then we have negative 216 again, caret parentheses one third and then plus 18 so this is what your what it should look like press enter zero we're good that's what we wanted it to be zero again i want to make sure that i don't make mistakes so i'm actually going to grab this and then change all the negative two sixteens to negative 27 delete that six by the way that delete button is right here guys right here okay seven delete okay so i have the right equation and press enter and oh it works in this one too so these are both solutions to this equation for us to solve all right one more all right now 
we have a habit that when we start using a new process that we always use that process but that's not always true it's just something extra that helps us with the weird questions so what i want you to do is keep in mind that some of of these problems on your homework you might be able to do without you substitution i'm trying to focus my camera guys i'm sorry it's taking a moment um, as you can see in example five here one of the biggest things i know i don't have to use u substitution for is because there's only two terms so we can actually solve this by normal um greatest common factor okay so the first thing i'm going to do is move it over to one side to get 4x cubed minus 8x squared equals zero and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the greatest common factor. So if I look at those coefficients, what's common between 4 and 8? I'm hoping you said 4. And what's common? Well, we both have x's, so that means I'm going to take the lowest exponent, which is 2. So x squared I'm going to take out. Now, factoring is the opposite of distributing distributing is multiplication so factoring is like we're dividing so 4x cubed divided by 4x squared would just leave an x negative 8x squared divided by 4x squared would leave a negative 2 and now we can split this out so 4x squared equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0 Okay, if you can recognize the first one right away, I'm fine with you going to the answer, but for the rest of you, I'll prove this to you. So I would divide both sides by 4, but 0 divided by 4 is still 0. How do you get rid of a square root? Well, I... Or how do you take... How do you get rid of a square? You take the square root of... The square root of 0 is 0. Okay, and then x minus 2, we get x equals 2. We still need to plug in our answers to double check our work. Well, if I plug in 0 here, of course that works because I would get 0 equals 0. So let's try with that too. So I would say 4, oops, four times 2 cubed, that equals 32, and 8 times 2 squared. And that equals 32, and since they are both equaled, this is a solution. Awesome. Okay, be careful on your factoring. We also know that all of these examples with these factoring guys had the leading coefficient of 1. We have to remember that when the leading coefficient is not 1, we have to go A times C so on and so on and so on with these it would be a good habit to still do a times c but you could go faster just recognizing what it is make sure you are asking questions if you forgot how to factor